levels that you're never gonna get. Always push it up into the red. Never expect your respect. I train 52 weeks times 10. After falling in love with Daredevil, not like that, though they say love is blind. Luke Cage and Jessica Jones. I was over the moon to hear that there was gonna be a Defenders series. Marvel clearly know what they're doing in terms of team-ups, and all of the solo series were hits commercially and critically. What could go wrong? Well, a lot, apparently. Being Marvel's worst performing Netflix show, the Defenders clearly didn't live up to the hype. After re-watching the series, I'm here to give my opinion on why the show underperformed. Reason one, the most interesting character is a mute. Elektra is by far the most interesting character in the Defenders universe. After debuting in Daredevil Season 2, her embodiment of the femme fatale made her a joy to watch. She really shook up the show and was one of the highlights of that season, so most fans were excited to see what she would bring to this crossover. As intelligent as she is beautiful, Elektra is the perfect anti-hero. She's travelled the world, been CEO of a billion dollar corporation, learnt a plethora of martial arts styles, done a ton of cocaine, stared death in the face and been resurrected. Surely there's a lot she has to tell us. Well, not really. Being mute for most of the Defenders, she pretty much becomes a lapdog. A henchman who shows up from time to time just to fight the team. It gets very repetitive. It gets more repetitive than the phrase, around the world, in the song, around the world, by Daft Punk. While she does eventually get the redemption that we desperately want for her, it's a long time coming and the wait isn't worth it. Electra should have been silent for, at most, two episodes. The fact that it takes double this before she even begins to emote makes it very difficult to become as invested in the character as we once were. Sure, my granddad thinks women should be seen and not heard, but everyone else wants to hear what Electra has to say, so it's a massively missed opportunity. Reason 4 too much bloody iron fist. Juxtaposing the most interesting character, we have the least interesting one, Iron Fist. I never really got the thinking behind putting him in the lead role. Iron Fist was panned critically and is one of the worst performing Netflix shows, well, ever. So it's baffling that Marvel decided to put him in the central role where all of the plot elements relied on him being a major part of the team. The character is so bland and boring. The most intriguing thing about him his fist gets used about four times throughout the entire show and even then it looks like he's just been eating too many watsits. It's just so bad. The producer's possessing neither the budget or charisma to truly present him as a billionaire. He basically just ends up being a guy in a suit. Have no idea why he was picked as the lead as there are three more far superior characters in the team that they could have focused on. Reason three. Too much focus on side characters. When watching a show called The Defenders, I want to see The Defenders. I'm guessing many fans felt exactly the same, so I have no idea why we spend so much time with Stick, Colleen Wing, Karen Page, the radio host Jessica hangs around with, Misty and the rest of the sidekicks. We see more of the police department office than we do the New York skyline. Having such a beautiful city to film in and instead pointing a camera at a desk so we can see Misty walk around asking questions that we already know the answer to is a complete waste of time. Marvel really dropped the ball with this. It would be like watching the Justice League from Alfred's perspective and it made it really difficult to engage with the characters we should care about. I want to give the writers a side kick in the balls. Reason 2 Boring villains. I don't want this to come across as disrespectful. Sigourney Weaver is one of the greatest actresses as far as cinema is concerned. Alien is undoubtedly a classic. She wasn't even bad in Alien 3 and that film is terrible. However, when all her characters require to do is to stand in a room or sit at a restaurant table, there's very little she can do with it. I really wanted to see the fear of death driving her to fight no matter what, but spoiler alert, she goes out like a punk. Stabbed in the back, she's written out in episode six. And the rest of her evil team don't possess the charisma that she does, especially not in a finale. Kilgrave, Kingpin, and Diamondback were all incredible villains. 
These brutal leaders were intimidating every time they appeared on screen, so it's a shame that the magic couldn't be recaptured in the Defenders. We are left with the old, we are not so different, you and I, speech about 10 times, and everything just feels completely toned down to this gritty universe that Netflix Marvel originally was. Where was that moment that Kingpin like slammed the guy's head in the door? Where was the moment where Kilgrave killed his parents? The villains and the Defenders just didn't have moments like this to really elevate them to that level of threat. And it's hard to invest in them because of it and it just makes them completely lackluster. Reason one, too many episodes. My biggest complaint about the Defenders is that the plot is stretched far too thin. The main plot points could have easily been covered in a two hour film so I have no idea why they needed to be dragged out to eight. Electro gets brought back to life by the hand, the heroes team up, they stop the villain. That's the entire plot of the show. So it's baffling that it was dragged out for longer than a Gareth Gates wedding speech. In addition to this, we get more endings than The Return of the King. And by the 17th one, I just wanted to cancel my Netflix subscription and buy some cyanide instead. Who has eight hours to kill when it's this boring? I prefer real TV shows that don't use padding or dragged out plot lines just to make more revenue for the show. And that's why I like to watch The Walking Dead. <laughs> Anyway, so that's my list on why The Defenders was really disappointing. Do you agree with my main problems with it? Is there anything else I should have included in this list? Am I completely wrong about The Defenders and was it the best show of all time? Better than Game of Thrones? Better than Breaking Bad? Comment below, let us know. And subscribe to my channel if you like this video as I do loads of comic, movie, game reviews, everything. So if you're into that sort of stuff, please subscribe by clicking my face somewhere around here. Thanks a lot. Take care. Peace.